This is a butylon, and this is a really beautiful kind of uh, salmon-y orange hybrid. I'm not sure what the variety is, but this is a great example of why I love this plant. It is a uh, uh, heavy flowering. Um, hummingbirds love this plant, and it's a great part shade plant. This one looks like it gets uh, shade all day long but it gets a lot of indirect light, so it's, it's real happy here, obviously. Uh, the size on this one is about seven feet tall by five feet wide. And um, one of the challenges with some of these different varieties is that they can be a little gangly. So it's, it's a good idea to pinch them and prune them and keep them as tight as you can. Otherwise, they'll tend to sprawl all over the place. And um, so, and I also find that the larger leafed and larger flowering varieties are even more gangly. So I, I like to use the smaller um, flower varieties. Um, this is a very easy plant to grow in this kind of a condition. It's a good companion plant with camellias. Here's a nice big one over here. And uh, as I said, they prefer some shade, but um, they can take a strong morning light. They really just, uh, in hot interior areas, you wanna avoid the hottest part of the day in the afternoon. If you're near the coast, these can take full sun all day. And what's neat about these, I'll show some photos, but there's just a lot of different flower colors available. And um, depending on the variety, uh, a lot of these bloom all year depending on where you are, but my white ones and my apricot ones have uh, been, have always been in bloom 12 months out of the year. Um, you can, and so the common name of this, there's two of them, is Chinese lantern because of the shape, and then also flowering maple because of the shape of the leaf. So those are the two common names, but the, uh, the botanical name is a butylon. Um, these can be prone to white fly. Uh, I have seen some of the ones that I've test grown get a lot of white fly on them, um, but not enough for me to be scared off. And um, I've also seen scale on this plant. So um, I've got one plant in particular has had scale quite a bit, but it's never really hurt the plant. It's just kind of unsightly and it's on the interior branches. So doesn't really affect what I'm looking at, so I just kind of live with it. I don't like to use um, pesticides where I don't have to, and uh, the plant's had the scale for probably five years, and it's been just fine. So know that it, it can get those two pests, but um, they're not usually enough to be something you need to treat. And um, cold hardiness. Now, if you buy these from a nursery, you'll notice in the winter they look pretty peaked. So when I think in the kind of mid-20s is uh, where the different varieties start having issues. So if you've got a coastal area where you don't get in the 20s, these will be very happy. And if you get in the get colder, I would say kind of zone 14 where I am in California uh, is fine for these. Uh, I've never had one die from the cold, so they can definitely handle uh, the mid to low 20s. And that, and again, uh, hummingbird food. This is probably one of the biggest features for this plant is this is their favorite plant I've ever had for them. And also just very long, profuse bloom for most of the varieties that I've tried. Definitely try this one out. A butylon, flowering maple, Chinese lantern. Uh, this is an abutilon that is kind of an orangey apricot color, a uh, larger variety. If I let this go, it would probably be 10 to 12 feet tall. Right now it's 8 feet tall by about 6 to 7 feet wide. And uh, it blooms about 9 or 10 months out of the year and is a very vigorous grower and a heavy bloomer. This is uh, September 1st and um, this thing is still doing a really nice show here.
There's a pink variety of abutilon. This is a good example of why they call this plant flowering maple. You see that maple shaped leaf. They also call it Chinese lantern because of these flowers that hang like Chinese lanterns. This is a really nice soft uh, peach color. And it's interesting, these never really open all the way. That's another characteristic of the abutilons is some open and are almost flat when they open all the way. And some stay closed up like this and that's as much as you're going to get. You see how the tips, there's all these buds, these do bloom on new growth. So you always want to be encouraging new growth by nipping these back uh, before they hit their stride. And again, this is a very heavy bloom at the end of August.